Holmes, can you tell the difference between the shunting versus stenting? That's one of the uh, yeah. uh, concerns of the audience, please. More in well, the layman's um, terms, please. Yeah. Uh, um, well, so stenting is, as we talked about, it's it's putting metal into the veins in the head uh, to hold the veins open where the vein was narrowed to reinforce the vein so it doesn't get narrowed anymore. And with the main purpose, the stent reduces the vein pressure in the head, which then allows the fluid to get reabsorbed um, at a lower pressure. It reduces the fluid pressure in the head by reducing the vein pressure in the head. Stenting is, is great for a number of reasons, mainly it's minimally invasive and uh, but but also it, it's it's actually addressing the fundamental problem of IH, which is that the vein pressure in the head is too high, which is making the fluid pressure too high. Um, it's it's repairing uh, a bottleneck to allow the vein blood to get out of the head, therefore keeping it from building up and therefore preventing the fluid pressure from building up. A shunt is a surgery that we do in the operating room where we drill a hole in the top of the head. We pass a catheter or a small tube through the brain into the fluid chamber of the brain. And then that catheter comes out of the head and gets tunneled down into the belly and it reroutes fluid out of the brain into, into the abdomen and uh, or some other, some other place. Shunting is like a constant spinal tap. It drips fluid constantly out of the head to lower the pressure in the head. Um, and it's an immediate way of, of reducing that pressure. The problem with shunting is that it's an it's a first off it's a brain surgery we're putting something into the brain into the belly, but shunts have a tendency to fail. They have a very high failure rate over time, and that failure happens for basically one of two main reasons: either the shunt gets blocked, meaning the catheter that's in the brain or the valve that regulates the flow through it, or the catheter in the belly it gets blocked. So some blood clot or material gets into it or it gets you know, stuck in the belly and uh, trapped in some space and fluid can't drain through it, in which case the shunt completely fails. The pressure just builds back up again and you're back in the same situation. Uh, or more commonly, the fluid chambers in the brain collapse around the catheter in the brain. And when that happens, the shunt drains that one fluid chamber really well, but no longer drains the rest of the fluid in the other chambers of the fluid around the brain. And so basically when that happens, it takes about eight weeks, it's almost universally happens in most people. Uh, when that happens, not as much fluid is still draining through the shunt and the pressure will now increase. So patients oftentimes, if their pressure was 35 before the shunt, you put the shunt in and Immediately, their pressure is 15. They feel great. And then about three months later, their pressure is hovering in the 20, low 20s, 22, 23, 24. And you get a CT scan, people feel bad, and the ventricles are collapsed around the catheter. And now you've reached a situation where that shunt is doing all that it can. Uh, but because the ventricles have collapsed, um, you're not draining as much fluid as you were before. And the fluid that's around the brain isn't communicating with the fluid of the ventricle anymore. And so the pressure is is at a point, it's not as high as it was beforehand, but it's at some point where people aren't happy. 